China has a new top diplomat in Canada. Today, he spoke to a small group of reporters here in Ottawa and communicated a warning to this country. The CBC's Evan Dyer was at the Chinese embassy today for that Q&A. He joins us now. Hi, Evan. Hi, Vashi. What exactly was the ambassador saying about Hong Kong? So the ambassador's message to Canada was don't go where Washington just went because we saw a bill pass both houses of Congress this week. Yesterday it passed the House of Representatives with only one vote against. It's already unanimously passed the Senate. And the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act does two things. First of all, it requires the State Department to recertify every year that Hong Kong is still being governed according to the terms of the original agreement under which it was handed back to China, one country, two systems, that there's not undue interference from Beijing. If the State Department says there is, Hong Kong immediately loses its trading privileges with the United States. The second part is about sanctions on individual Chinese officials involved in repression in Hong Kong. And the Chinese really don't like this law. That was very clear today at the embassy. And the message from Ambassador Tsong Pei Yu was, Canada, don't go there. Let's watch a clip. If somebody here really trying to push the decision you know, to have this kind of law like that in the United States, it's very dangerous. And certainly we firmly opposed to that. And uh, if anything happens like this, we'll certainly have a very bad damage on our bilateral relationship. And that's not in the interests of Canada. So, as you know, of course, Vashi, we do have a law that would already allow us to sanction Chinese officials or the officials of any other country, the Magnitsky Act. But as far as we know, there's no consideration being given to using that in the case of Hong Kong. You have been in the room for a similar type of presentation from yeah. the former ambassador. How would you compare the two experiences? Is there any kind of change in tone? Not really. I would have to say the tone of Lu She, the former ambassador, was very similar to that of Tsong Pei Wu. There was really no daylight between them in terms of the message either. Uh, it's still a message that our relationship is not good. He talked about twists and turns, setbacks, problems in the relationship, that it's in a sad place. Uh, but also the other side, part of that message is that it's Canada's job to fix it. And the way that Canada does that is releasing Meng Wanzhou. Let's listen to a little bit of what he had to say in response to a question from the People's Daily, which appeared almost designed to set up the ambassador to communicate a message to the Canadian government. We do hope the Canadian side will reflect on what had happened and to take concrete measures to push our relationship back to the normal track. So that's the task for the new government. And uh, we do hope that those important people in the new cabinet will play an active role in uh, making sure that relations of our two countries returning to the normal track on the basis of mutual respect and uh, equality. So that was the message. You know, it was a message of, uh, wouldn't it be great if we could get things back on track? But it's really your fault that things are in this condition to begin with, and it's going to be up to you to mend things. Uh, and it, it seemed very much like an opportunity to communicate that message to a new Canadian cabinet and a new ambassador in Beijing. All right. Thank you, Evan. Thanks, Vashi. The CBC's Evan Dyer. So what should the federal government make of today's remarks from the Chinese ambassador? Guy Saint-Jacques served as Canada's ambassador to China from 2012 to 2016. He's now a senior fellow at the University of Alberta's China Institute and joins us from Montreal. Hi, Mr. Saint-Jacques. Nice to see you again. Uh, good afternoon. Nice to see you, too. I wanted to start off by getting your take on, I know you re reviewed the remarks from Ambassador Tsong, getting your take on, on something that stood out for me, and that was when he put the onus basically on the new cabinet for restoring, quote-unquote, the relationship between China and Canada. How did you interpret that? Well, I think he, uh, he is uh, consistent with the uh, position that has been outlined so far by the uh, spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And from the outset, they have said that uh, uh, it, Canada made a mistake by uh, uh, arresting Mrs. Meng, that this was political, and they say it's not a, a, ju a judicial case, and therefore she should be released. And on that point, I think he shows no flexibility and no understanding of how an extradition treaty works. And did that surprise you, or were you expecting that? I was expecting that. I think, you know, uh, uh, did, uh, clearly this was to be expected uh, coming from him. 
He was asked the question about what he expects about, from the new cabinet, and particularly, obviously, there is a new minister in the role that oversees the relationship with Canada. It's moved from Christopher, with China, rather. It's moved from Christopher Freeland to Francois Philippe Champagne. He was asked the question by what uh, many consider a friendly media outlet to China, the People's Daily. Uh, do you think that could have been a planted question in order for the ambassador to deliver the message that he wanted? Well, uh, as I uh, like to say, there are no uh, coincidences uh, where, when you deal with China. So in this case, it was clearly uh, a question that had been uh, planted. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it just, again, uh, serves to put more pressure on the Canadian side to try to uh, uh, come up with a solution uh, if we want thing, uh, things to come back to normal. But I would argue that, in, in fact, we are past uh, that stage. Uh, it will it will be uh, very difficult to come back to a, a normal kind of uh, relationship uh, now that we have seen how uh, China can act uh, brutally when you do something that they don't like. Let me ask you about Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver because I know you've been following uh, their detention very closely. They have been detained for nearly a year, I believe, at this point. Um, the ambassador was asked about uh, about their condition and about the charges. He used the term charge, rather, in laying out the allegations against both of them. But according to the government, Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spaver have only been formally arrested. What's your understanding of the status of their cases? Well, I think there is uh, uh, some uh, ambiguity in the Chinese position, and I don't uh, really understand. In fact, I was reviewing the, the process timeline that exists for uh, the, the, the judicial case to, to proceed. And uh, the, as far I, uh, as I know, there's no distinction between being formally uh, detained and, uh, or arrested and formally charged. Uh, of course, once you are formally charged, then the process starts. And since uh, they were formally arrested in May, in fact, that means that we should be uh, about six months into the process. And, and that would be to uh, where we would be very close to the case being referred to the, uh, uh, the procurator for review. Uh, the investigations would have been completed uh, and in fact, the, the two Michaels would have had access uh, to their lawyers uh, by this stage, but nothing like this has happened so far. So I think they may be uh, playing with words here, and they know that once they start the uh, official judicial process, that uh, they will not want to interfere. They will claim that uh, China is governed by the rule of law. So I think that they are trying to de delay uh, this as much as possible. But that means, of course, for uh, both uh, Spaver and Kovrig that they're, they are in uh, limbo and uh, they don't see when uh, they will uh, come out of this uh, nightmare. Have you heard anything about their condition? And I asked because we had uh, Professor Gordon, Gordon Holden on a, a little while ago, I think just last week, and he was saying he had been there as part of a, a group of people, a, a regular trip, but, but unique, obviously, in the, these circumstances. And he had expressed some optimism that perhaps the conditions of their arrest may change uh, at some point in the near future. Have you heard anything about their condition? Well, uh, the, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, their condition has changed uh, somewhat after the, uh, the uh, interrogation phase was uh, completed because at that time they were both uh, detained in a room uh, with no daylight. There were two people watching them uh, 24 hours a day. They couldn't go to the washroom alone. So there was no privacy and they were subject to at least six hours of uh, interrogation uh, every day. Now that the, the, that phase uh, has been completed and my understanding is that it was completed in May, uh, they were moved to uh, a regular prison. And so the Chinese will say, well, they are subject to the same conditions as other uh, prisoners. But that means that uh, they, uh, they can go outside maybe uh, uh, 15 minutes per day. Uh, in my experience, for instance, when uh, Kevin Garrett was detained, he had to pay to get uh, extra food because by the time the food cart would get to his cell, uh, you know, there, were, there would be any, uh, any food left. I know also that uh, each time that uh, uh, Michael Kovrig receives a, a consular visit, he is asking, when are you going to uh, get me out of this mess? And of course, on this, uh, and you're right, you know, on December 10, it will be the first anniversary of their uh, detention. And basically, there has been uh, not much uh, progress. They, they, are, they have not been able to have access to a lawyer yet. 
Uh, and we just know that uh, the, in the case of Kovic, he has been formally charged with uh, secretly uh, gathering uh, state secrets and intelligence for foreign forces. In the case of uh, Spiffer, it's secretly uh, uh, gathering state secrets and intelligence for foreign forces. So I think there is, uh, I'm not clear exactly uh, how the, the Chinese uh, will want to proceed in terms of uh, next steps. Before I let you go, I want to ask you also about Hong Kong, because Ambassador Tsang warned Canada today of any effort to replicate recent U.S. legislation or American legislation that opens the door for sanctions against officials in that country. He said it will have a, quote, very bad damage in our bilateral relationship and that it is not in the interest of Canada. What is your assessment so far of the posture of this country towards the ongoing situation in Hong Kong? Well, uh, apart from one uh, press release that was issued by the, the previous Minister of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, Mrs. Uh, Freeland, I think we have been uh, relatively quiet. And in fact, what's going on in Hong Kong calls for, in my view, more uh, forceful uh, public remarks, because uh, uh, I don't think that uh, China has been uh, living by the uh, the, the spirit of the agreement that led to this one country, uh, two system. It, it's clear that in the last few years they have interfered in the uh, uh, political process uh, numerous times. You will have seen also that, that uh, uh, Beijing reacted very negatively to the decision by the Hong Kong uh, Supreme Court to say that uh, uh, the government could not limit people from wearing uh, masks when they are demonstrating and Beijing criticized and said they had the last word. Well, obviously, if you have one country, two systems, this should be separate. I think also we have a lot at stake in as much as we have 300,000 Canadians mm -hmm. uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, obviously the government has to be concerned about their safety and try to impress on China that they have to find ways to resolve uh, this crisis in a peaceful way. Okay, I have to leave it there, but thank you very much, Mr. Saint-Jacques. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Former Canadian ambassador to China, Guy Saint-Jacques. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.